Wishing you all a great week. Let us start discussing a new topic for this week. We discuss one of the parables of Jesus, which is popularly known as the parable of ten minas. It is recorded in uh, Luke chapter 19. As this parable is a bit long, I am uh, not uh, reading this parable uh, right now. Uh, please read this parable from your bible at your leisure so without uh, reading this parable in in in, uh, in detail by every word uh, i am entering into the discussion this parable is about the long absence of jesus from this world jesus came to this world and he started his ministry declaring that the kingdom of heaven is near and during his ministry he again declared that the kingdom of god is within you and before establishing an earthly kingdom jesus is going away going away to uh, the kingdom of heaven to the uh, king of kings as jesus was approaching jerusalem he was surrounded by and he was followed by his disciples and a large crowd actually jesus started his journey from somewhere uh, in galilee he moved through many places and as he moved he gathered uh, more and more followers and now he is he is nearing jerusalem and the jews around him and his disciples also they expected Jesus to establish a worldly kingdom and to liberate them to give them freedom from Roman empire and the new kingdom established by Jesus as they expected will be forever and the Jews will have peace and rest forever so as they as they approached Jerusalem this expectation was so high that even his disciples started discussing about their portfolio in the new kingdom knowing their thought understanding their thought jesus is explaining that there will be a time gap in between the declaration and the beginning of the kingdom of god in this world as he has already done and the establishment of the real kingdom as jesus started his ministry he declared that the kingdom of heaven is near and at some other occasion he declared that jesus kingdom of god is within you but there is a time gap before he establish a earthly kingdom jesus had to go to the heavenly father the heavenly king get his kingdom and come back and then establish a kingdom in this world in order to explain this um, mystery jesus is telling this parable so when jesus was telling this parable the particular situation was so matching to the story that the audience easily understood what jesus said let me tell you the particular situation before we go to the story the most of the jewish occupied areas or all of jewish occupied areas of the time were a part of the roman empire roman empire was very strong and it was very vast it was very wide and jews were suffering jews were living under the roman empire and the roman empire they appointed kings or governors for different uh, provinces for the jewish province they appointed more than one king and usually the kings were selected from the local people at at at, at other occasion the rome had to uh, bring down kings 
from other part of the empire and and the the, the supposed king the proposed king or the person who wanted to become a king and the local person who wanted to become a, become a king of the province had to go to the roman empire go to rome meet the authorities there the, the roman senate there and get the king the he has he had to be declared as king of the province and then he will come back to the province and he will start ruling the province as the king and he is a king under the roman empire and here in this parable he is talking about such a man this man wanted to become a king he wanted to become a king of his province and so he he decided to go to the far away place to the empire to get his kingdom so this man might have been a very good fellow a very kind man a very kind man to his uh, servants so he called his servants and entrusted them 10 minas now one mina is equal to the wages of 3 months so he entrusted 10 minas to 10 of his servants it means that each servant got one mina and he asked them to trade it in his absence now why he why he wanted to trade because he wanted his mina his wealth to be multiplied so this mina that he the mina that he gave to his uh, to his servants was his real wealth and this man he understood very well that wealth is something that multiplies in his absence and in his presence so it must must multiply even in his absence so he called his servants entrusted them his wealth and he went to the far far away place to the emperor to to get his kingdom and during his absence the servants started trading it after getting his kingdom he came back so it took some time because the conveyance was not so easy at the time he might have gone by foot to meet the emperor and came back by foot and during the time the servants they traded with the what they got with the wealth of their master the servants were very faithful they did not take away, take away the money they did not take even a single coin from the master's wealth when the master came back they uh, came to the master to give account of what they did during his absence and the first one came and told the master that he traded with the minas he got and he earned 10 more <coughs> minas the master was very happy and the master declared him to be a faithful trustworthy uh, servant and appointed him to be uh, a small king or to be in charge of uh, appointed him in charge of 10 towns the master is following the way uh, of the romans to rule his kingdom and the second man came and he also gave his account and he told the master that the master gave him 5 minas one mina i mean one mina and he earned five more minas the master was happy master called him trustworthy and master uh, put him in charge of five uh, cities and the third one or maybe the last one came and he he was very sad he came with a drooping head and he told the master that he could not trade with the mina or he did not try even to trade with the mina but he kept it very safe covered with the cloth that is he kept it very safe so that it will, it will not be ruined in any way and he presented back the mina he did not take the mina of the master he gave back the wealth of the master that the master gave him but the master was very angry with him 
Master called him an evil servant. And uh, Master ordered that the mina with the, with the servant must be taken and given to uh, the first one who, who has earned or who had earned uh, uh, ten more minas. So this was the policy of the, of the uh, Master. And this is a, this is a story that this is a parable that Jesus said. Now, when Jesus said this parable, Jesus meant that he will be away away for a while. And during this time, we must or his servants must trade with the uh, with the wealth that Jesus has uh, given us, entrusted us. Now. The master here wanted to multiply his wealth. He gave his mina to multiply his wealth. How it is multiplied, whether, whether the, the servants traded it or not, was not that much important for the master. The master wanted to multiply. That is why the master says to the third servant like this, Why then didn't you put my money on deposit? <coughs> So that when I came back, I could have collected it with uh, interest. So even if they could not uh, trade it directly, they could give the money to some other traders or put it in deposit with some other traders and could get the money, uh, could get his wealth multiplied. And the master also wanted to examine uh, who is the right person to be appointed in charge of the towns. So the master gave the wealth to the servants for two purposes. One is to multiply his wealth. Another one is to find the right person uh, uh, to be appointed in charge of uh, towns under him. So when the first servant came with uh, 10 more minas, he is the best person, he is selected as the best person and he is appointed as um, uh, king or governor in uh, uh, for ten, 10 more cities. And the, in the Roman Empire, they appointed these provincial kings with uh, three purposes. One is to maintain peace in the region. And the second one is to maintain a peaceful relationship with the Rome. And the third one is to raise tax and revenue for their, uh, for Roman uh, Empire. And Jesus also has uh, this kind of intention when he gave his wealth to us, when he gave interest to his wealth to us. He wanted to maintain peace in this world. We are peace bearers. We are talking about peace. We declare peace. Our, our, our life should spread peace in this, uh, uh, in, this, in, this, in this world. And we must maintain, we must try to maintain a peaceful relationship with uh, heaven and earth. That is the duty of us, the followers, the believers in Jesus Christ. We must maintain a peaceful relationship with uh, heaven and uh, earth till Jesus came. And of course, multiplication, multiplying the kingdom of God is very important. And uh, I, I have mentioned more than once that Jesus has entrusted us with his wealth. As his master gave his wealth to his servants, Jesus also gave his wealth to, with, uh, to his servants, to people like us, or people who believed in him. What is the wealth of Jesus actually? And Jesus' wealth is explained in the Great Commission. The Great Commission has four parts. Actually, it is not, it is not four different parts. It is not four separated parts. It is one thing, Great Commission is one thing. And for uh, studying it, let us divide into four parts. In Mark 16, 15 to 18, we read like this. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. 
but who are does not believe will be condemned and those and these signs will accompany those who believe in my name they will cry out demons they will speak in new tongues they will pick up snakes with their hands and when they drink deadly poison it will not hurt them at all they will place their hands on sick people and they will get well then then again in matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20 we read then jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and teaching them to obey everything i have commanded you and surely i am with you always to the very end of the age so the last commandment given by jesus in mark and in in matthew they both um include uh the great commission now the great commission is the wealth that jesus has given us and this great commission includes i i have as i have already said it has four parts or we are dividing into four parts for uh studying one is preach the gospel and second one is baptize those who believe and third one teach them his commandments and fourth make disciples of christ so the great commission has these four parts preach the gospel baptize teach and make disciples or oh, to make it short let me say preach baptize teach and uh, disciples so these these are the four uh, discipleship i mean these are the four parts of the great commission and if we put together these four parts we can we 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 may use one single phrase to uh, to speak about it to denote it that is the gospel of the kingdom of god the gospel of the kingdom of god is a great commission the gospel of the kingdom of god includes these four things that is preach baptize teach and um, discipleship this is the wealth that jesus has given us to trade we have to trade it and the gospel of the kingdom of god must multiply and multiply into a hundredfold before our lord comes back to establish the kingdom of god on this earth john the baptist when he started his ministry he declared the kingdom of god in matthew chapter 3 verse 1 2 in those days john the baptist came preaching in the wilderness of judea and saying repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near and when jesus started his ministry he also declared the kingdom of god in matthew chapter 4 verse 17 from that time on jesus began to preach repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near so the kingdom of heaven that is a great treasure that jesus has uh, given us it includes repentance salvation by grace through faith in jesus baptism holy and separate life divine health the second coming of christ inheriting the everlasting kingdom and uh, many more things and this wealth has to be increased how we can increase this wealth let us see what god says what our what jesus says about it he said another parable about the growth of the kingdom of god and in mark 4 verse 26 to 29 he also said this is what the kingdom of god is like a man scatters seed on the ground night and day whether he sleeps or gets up the seed sprouts and grows though he does not know how so this man he scatters some seed on the ground and he goes to sleep he didn't care about it again he didn't give any kind of care to the seed to to the plant again but still the seed sprouts and grows 
and um, uh, it uh, produced hundredfold uh, uh, harvest, hundredfold grain. In verse 22, all by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. So kingdom of God grows like this. It is scattered all around this world and it will grow by itself. Even if there is nobody to care about it, remember that kingdom of God will grow uh, itself. Because kingdom of God has a power, has an innate power, has an innate energy in it to grow. No one can defeat the kingdom of God. In Mark 4, 32-32, Jesus uh, said another parable to explain the growth of the kingdom of God. Again he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds of earth. So kingdom of God was very small when it started. It started with Jesus, with a single man somewhere in a corner of the world but it started growing it started growing and growing and is still growing in verse 32 yet when planted it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade and again jesus says uh, another very small parable to explain uh, the multiplication of um, the kingdom of God. In Matthew chapter 13 verse 33, a single verse, he told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it walked all through the duff. So here a lady, a woman, she took 60 pounds of duff and puts into it a very small amount of a small unit measure of yeast, a small measure of yeast in it. And because the yeast ha has a power to, uh, to, to, wor to work, to work it, the whole uh, pound of wheat into a duff, it started working, it started working, it started working. And after some hours, the whole floor uh, was made into a tough. The whole floor was formatted. So how can we train? The master, remember in the parable, the master asked his servants to train. He gave them 10 minutes, one minute to each person and asked them to trade. Here Jesus is also asking us, us to trade his wealth. His wealth is the great commandment that is the king, the gospel of the kingdom of God, which will surely grow. And Jesus has talked about it more than once, as we have already seen. How can we trade? So we can trade it in, through, in two ways. One is proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. Tell each and everyone you meet that a kingdom is coming. The world is shaky. The world economic policies are breaking down. They are crumbling down. And the wisdom of man is proving itself to be fruitless every day. And we have opportunity every day to tell our friends. We have opportunity every day to tell uh, uh, whom we meet that a kingdom is coming. Jesus is going to come back to establish a kingdom that will never be shaken. So proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. And the second method of trading is extending the presence of the kingdom. How can we extend the presence of the, uh, of the kingdom? Let me read um, a passage from the uh, Bible uh, from Matthew chapter 12 verse 22 to 28. I will read only 28. Jesus uh, uh, cast out or Jesus threw out a deaf demon, a deaf and dumb demon from a person. And that person, he was healed, he was free from 
the possession of the devil. But the Pharisees and some of the Jews around him criticized him, saying that he casted out the demon by the power of Beelzebub or Beelzebul or uh, say devil. And Jesus answered that a kingdom that fights against itself cannot stand. If uh, Beelzebul is uh, driving out demons from a person, that means that Beelzebul, a devil, is uh, working against the kingdom of devil itself. So the kingdom of devil will not stand, so they will not do it. But he, Jesus is driving out demons by the power of God, by the finger of God. And in verse 28, Jesus is steadily concluding um, the incident like this. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I try our demons, that the kingdom of God has come upon you. So that means the kingdom of God has come upon you uh, because I am declaring victory over devil, over demons. So when a person is delivered from devil, from, the, from a person is delivered from a sickness, from a person is delivered from, the, the, from a demon possession, from a person is delivered from a continued or a, a, a continuous con, continual financial star, uh, crisis when a person is uh, delivered from alcoholism when a person is de delivered from drug addiction we are declaring victory over the kingdom of satan now when we declare victory over the kingdom of satan it means that kingdom of god has come i hope this message has been a blessing to you and um, uh, I believe that um, you will come back next Sunday for discussing another subject. May God bless you. Amen.